Hello, uh, everybody. Uh, this is uh, Dr. Ayasuki Nemoto. Uh, I am now uh, advisor to Office Master Emoto and advisor to Sose World. Uh, I'm really uh, grateful to uh, Lindsay Kemp uh, for giving me uh, this wonderful opportunity. So now uh, I'm going to talk uh, about the fourth phase of water and its relationship with water crystal uh, photography. And uh, first, uh, I will explain about the water crystal uh, photography developed by the late uh, Dr. Masaru Emoto. And uh, as many of you know, that uh, uh, unfortunately, Dr. Emoto uh, passed away uh, on October 17th uh, in the year uh, 2014. And uh, after he passed away, uh, his staff, uh, you know, including myself, uh, continue to spread his message uh, to the world. And, uh, you know, I was uh, working as an uh, international secretary uh, and also a kind of uh, scientific advisor uh, to uh, Dr. Masaru Emoto. And uh, uh, one of the most uh, frequently asked questions uh, to Dr. Emoto was, uh, what is the best water, you know, for you? And uh, he used to uh, answer to this question uh, like this. Oh, it's beer. And it's a kind of a joke, you know, a kind of Japanese joke, maybe, but also uh, the beer uh, contained a lot of water. That's true. Maybe 99, more than 99%, uh, it's uh, water. Uh, and also, he loved uh, beer very much. Uh, anyway, and you know, the, in this uh, presentation, uh, I would like to explain that the water is much, much more important than you may think. And, uh, you know, Dr. Emoto uh, believed that the water can memorize information. And however, water always looks transparent and similar to each other. And uh, as I will explain to you, that if we send our love and gratitude, for example, uh, to liquid water, Dr. Emoto believed, and also we believe, that uh, water will change, its structure will change. But uh, in appearance, um, the liquid water looks uh, you know, do, uh, not to change at all. And so Dr. Emoto was looking for a way to make the invisible things visible. Invisible things, in this case, uh, mean uh, the information uh, contained in liquid water. And one day, uh, he was reading a book uh, about snow crystal. Uh, this is, uh, you know, snow crystal. It's not uh, water crystal. But anyway, uh, when he was reading the book uh, about snow crystal, he got an idea that uh, if uh, we freeze the liquid water, and uh, if we could find uh, this kind of you know, crystal shape, uh, crystal shape from uh, liquid water, the uh, shape of uh, water crystal might deflect the invisible information contained in the liquid water. This was uh, his idea. It's very unique, I think. And he got this idea uh, in 1994. And he asked uh, one of his staff to check this you know, idea. And uh, uh, he put, uh, you know, uh, his staff put uh, drops of water onto each petri dish. And uh, uh, he put the petri dish uh, into the refrigerator. And here, this is uh, uh, ice crystal. And then uh, he uh, observed the each ice crystal under the microscope. But, uh, you know, uh, first three or uh, four months, uh, he could not find any water crystal at all. And during this time, uh, what Dr. Emoto uh, did to him was uh, in every evening, uh, Dr. Emoto took him to a nearby bar and they drank beer together. And that means that Dr. Emoto uh, tried to encourage him. And because of this, you know, Dr. Emoto's encouragement, probably, 
after you know three or four months, he succeeded in taking water crystal photograph. This is the you know first time uh, water crystal photographs. And uh, uh, then uh, Dr. Emoto and his staff uh, did uh, several experiments and they took a lot of uh, photographs and they published this book uh, named Message from Water. It was the year 1999. And also here, this is the latest version. Uh, it was last year, uh, we, the office master Emoto, published uh, this book. Uh, the name is, uh, title is a Message from Water, the final. And it's uh, written in English and Japanese. So it's bilingual. So if you are interested, uh, please uh, buy this from internet or in you know, amazon.com. Anyway, and uh, at the, you know, in the first half of my presentation, I will explain about the water crystal photography uh, developed by the late uh, Dr. Masara Emoto. And they first uh, checked uh, many different water samples uh, and uh, first they checked the tap waters in the world. And in my presentation, I will show you uh, several examples, only a few examples. And this is a, a water crystal uh, made from tap water in Tokyo. So there was uh, no beautiful uh, crystal shape at all. That means uh, the water was not so good. And here, this is another uh, water crystal, but from tap water in Paris, no beautiful water crystal at all. And here, this is tap water in Berlin, Germany. Uh, you can see uh, partially the hexagonal water crystal. So uh, we think the tap water in Berlin is not so bad. And here, uh, the last example of uh, tap waters. This is uh, from Vancouver, Canada, and this shape is quite good. So we believe that uh, uh, the tap water in Vancouver, Canada is uh, very good. And then we also, you know, Dr. Emoto and his staff uh, also checked the natural waters in the world. I will show you uh, some examples. And here, uh, this shape is very, very beautiful. It's uh, really a uh, jewelry. And uh, this water is uh, uh, sandwich spring water uh, in Japan. Uh, it's uh, really beautiful and uh, we believe this might be the most beautiful water crystals uh, from natural water. Okay, and next one, this is uh, uh, water from Lake uh, Majore in Switzerland. This is quite nice mm, water crystal. And also here, this is uh, actually ice, Antarctic ice. Uh, uh, somebody uh, sent us the Antarctic ice and we uh, once uh, melted the ice and then we froze the ice and we found this uh, beautiful and I think it's very powerful uh, water crystal. So the, the water at that time, it was, uh, you know, 300,000 years ago, you know. So the water was so nice, I believe. And then uh, Dr. Emoto did some uh, kind of strange experiment. And here uh, he played music to water. And uh, for this kind of experiment, uh, we used the same water, which is actually the pure water or uh, uh, distilled water. And the uh, distilled water is in this glass container. And uh, here's the uh, speakers and we played uh, each music once. Then after that, we froze this liquid water and observed the water crystal. And here, this is a, a result of a controlled experiment which means uh, we did not uh, play any music at all. This is a water crystal from uh, distilled water. Uh, it's kind of a simple uh, shape. And then uh, just one example I will show you uh, in this presentation. And we played the music, uh, La Novia. And then uh, we observed the water crystals. But in this case, uh, not only we took water crystal photographs, but also we took a video, video clip, and uh, uh, as you will know that uh, 
the water crystal is growing under the uh, microscope. It's not static. And in this uh, video, you will see that the water crystal is actually growing horizontally. And uh, so first, you know, we froze the water, which was exposed to the music Lanobia, and then we observed uh, water crystal uh, under the microscope. And sometimes we took photograph and sometimes we took the video. And after that, we combined the video clips and the photographs. And then finally, we put the uh, Lanobia, the music, as the background music. And so we call this you know, water crystal video. So yeah, please enjoy the water crystal video of Lanobia. Okay. Sigue atrás un novio amante y que al unir sus corazones para al morir mis ilusiones del altar está llorando todos dirán que de alegría dentro su alma está gritando Ave María mentira también al decir que sí y al besar la cruz me dirá So now you understand that the water crystal is growing under the microscope. And uh, you know, music contains a lot of different vibration or information. So the water crystal shows a, a variety of shape, you know, uh, when exposed to your music. Then uh, Dr. Emoto did another uh, kind of very strange uh, experiment. And in this case, uh, he showed the images uh, photographs uh, to water. And here, uh, this image is actually a group of dolphins. And here is a, a distilled water. And uh, next day, uh, we froze the water and we observed the water crystals. And here, this is a, a result uh, of the photograph of group of dolphins. And maybe you notice that at the core, uh, it seems that there are a group of dolphins. And the uh, shape, you know, generally, it's very unique, you know, in this case, okay. And next, uh, we show the photograph of an elephant. And please remember the shape of this, you know, uh, nose or trunk uh, of elephant. And here, now, we got this uh, water crystal. Oh, here is a trunk uh, or nose of the elephant. Oh, very strange. 
And here another photograph. Uh, this is a photograph of the uh, shrine, very famous shrine in Japan. Uh, it's an Izumo shrine. And please remember the shape of the roof and uh, this part we call Shimenawa. And we got uh, this photograph. Oh, this uh, part looks like a roof. And here is a Shimenawa. Uh, very strange. And you know, finally, uh, we showed the shape of heart mark to the water, and we found a oh, heart mark uh, water crystal. So, uh, Dr. Emoto said that oh, this is evidence that the water can have a memory, but uh, I am a, a scientist, so it's not uh, evidence, it's, um, it may suggest, you know. But then, uh, what uh, Dr. Emoto did, uh, one more uh, strange, a kind of strange experiment, and in this case, he showed the words to water. And here, uh, in this case, uh, this is a uh, UFO uh, in Japanese, uh, bakayaro actually. And uh, here, right side, this is thank you in Japanese. And we printed uh, those words uh, and we put a, a label uh, just behind the, this uh, water container. And first, the result of UFO. And here, uh, this is the result of UFO in Japanese. And we didn't find any beautiful water crystals. Uh, okay. And then next, we showed the word thank you in Japanese, which is arigato. And we found this very nice, uh, powerful, uh, really hexagonal, uh, beautiful water crystals. And then uh, we showed the word love and gratitude together in Japanese. And uh, this shape, uh, you know, water crystal is uh, so nice. And we believe that the shape of this water crystal is the most beautiful uh, shape. And so, uh, Dr. Emoto and we are thinking that uh, water likes love and gratitude very much. Okay, now here, this is a summary uh, of the message from water. And uh, number one, it seems that good water shows beautiful water crystals, while bad water does not show any crystal at all. In this case, good water means, uh, uh, I believe it's uh, harmonious with nature or healthy to your body. Uh, this is, we say, good water, okay? And second, water can be changed by music, images, words, and prayers. Uh, okay, and number three, water likes love and gratitude the most. And so it has been suggested that water has memory. But uh, also uh, there was a kind of criticism against uh, the message from water or Dr. Emoto's work. Uh, because some scientists were saying that uh, water cannot have a memory or like that. And, but uh, very fortunately uh, to us, uh, very recently, uh, some water scientists are giving uh, evidence that water has a memory. And so uh, today, you know, uh, I explain uh, briefly about the fourth phase of water. Uh, this is uh, Dr. Gerard Pollack's uh, theory. Uh, and uh, uh, here, uh, this is uh, Dr. Gerard Pollack, and he's a uh, professor at the University of Washington. And uh, we were very fortunate that uh, we are having a good, wonderful relationship with uh, Gerard Pollack. And uh, because uh, uh, recently, uh, here, this uh, left side, you see the fourth phase of water. Uh, this is a book written by uh, Gerald Pollack, uh, original English version. Uh, and this right side, uh, just recently, uh, actually uh, June uh, this year, we uh, translated the, his uh, English book into Japanese. And so, uh, we are very happy that the uh, Japanese people uh, are now uh, can get the uh, information about the fourth phase of water in Japanese. Okay, and uh, uh, here, this is uh, uh, again his book, The Fourth Phase of Water. And uh, briefly, uh, I will explain what is the fourth phase. 
Of course,、uh, there are three phases in water、uh, solid ice and liquid water and vapor.、Uh, three phases in water, this is a quite a, a common sense. You know, everybody knows about this. Yet,、uh, Dr.、Um, Gerard Pollack,、uh, he is proposing that there is another phase.、Uh, he called、uh, this fourth phase between ice and water. And uh, so, uh, fourth phase、uh, comes between ice and water.、Uh, this means uh, if uh, the ice is melted, and then、uh, the water will、uh, become liquid water, you know, ice will become liquid water, but it will go through the phase, this phase, fourth phase. And also, in the other way, if we freeze the liquid water into ice, then it will go through the fourth phase. So, fourth phase is a kind of liquid, but it's very、uh, viscous. And Dr. p o l a k is saying、uh, this fourth phase is like、uh, honey. So, it's very viscous. Yeah, please remember this point. And、uh, I'll you know, explain about Dr. p o l a k s、uh, experiment itself. And before that, uh, please uh, understand there, there are two types of surface. And one type、uh, is hydrophilic. We say hydrophilic,、uh, which means water loving.、Uh, it's a glass or gel or some plastics,、uh, cell surface, skin, etc. And、uh, you know,、uh, in the opposite、uh, type is、uh, hydrophobic, we say,、uh, which means、uh, water hating.、Uh, if you think about the raincoat, the surface of a raincoat,、uh, the water drop does not become you know,、uh, wet with the surface. Or、uh, you know, Teflon、uh, coated frying pan, and the water droplet,、uh, you know, it's just uh, uh, it keeps the round shape. Uh, the surface will not get wet. So, this kind of surface we call hydrophobic. And in、um, Dr. p o l a k s experiment, uh, we uh, mention or we use、uh, only hydrophilic surfaces. So, you can forget about the hydrophobic.、Uh, please remember hydrophilic. And here, this is、uh, Dr. p o l a k s、uh, kind of you know, first experiment. And here,、uh, this part,、uh, left side,、uh, it is Uh, said gel, and here's a gel. And the、um, important point is that the surface of the gel is、uh, hydrophilic. And here's the surface. And、uh, this part, the most part is uh, uh, it's liquid water here. And the experiment was done in room temperature. And so no ice or no vapor. And this is under the microscope, by the way. And、uh, here, this is liquid water. And、uh, the scale is like this.、Um, The width of this、uh, whole area is about 0.1 millimeter. 0.1 millimeter, you can、uh, guess that one millimeter, you can,、uh, you know, one millimeter、uh, width. But this is、uh, 0.1 millimeter. So it's、uh, maybe it's very difficult to see、uh, with your naked eye, but、uh, it's, you know, 0.1 millimeter about. The width is about 0.1 millimeter. And、uh, Dr. p o l a k wanted to know that any movement of this、uh, liquid water. But the liquid water is transparent under the microscope. And if the water is moving you know, somehow,、uh, we cannot see any movement. So he added、uh, some particles.、Uh, this is a uh, latex, uh, very tiny particles here, many particles. And、uh, you know, he started to watch、uh, any movement、uh, of water. And here I'll show you this is a video, and、uh, like this.、Uh, at the beginning, you know, already the particles were somehow excluded from the surface zone, surface,、uh, but、uh, you know, finally it's,、uh, they are excluded from the hydrophilic surface. And here I will repeat the、uh, image. And、uh, so, somehow, here's、uh, this area is transparent. And so, we cannot see any structure under the microscope. But somehow, the small particles were excluded from this area near hydrophilic surface. 
And uh, here, this is uh, um, Dr. Polak's you know, interpretation. And uh, he named this zone, exclusion zone. And somehow, uh, this is uh, transparent, so we could not identify any structure under the light microscope. But uh, probably there, uh, there was uh, some you know, um, structure, like a crystal, like an ice crystal. And so, uh, because uh, there is uh, some structure uh, you know, uh, building up in this zone, uh, those uh, tiny particles were excluded. So this zone, he named exclusion zone, or EZ in short. And here, this is a uh, illustration, again, the same thing. Uh, here's the material, but the surface should be hydrophilic. Then near the surface, the width is about 0 0.1 millimeter. And here, there should be some uh, structure, uh, exclusion zone, uh, easy water with some structure. And other part, uh, here, this is just ordinary uh, liquid water. And we call uh, this ordinary water, bulk water. This is a kind of technical term. And, you know, the, when the uh, liquid water uh, freezes, uh, for example, in a lake in winter, in winter season, or in a pond, or in a lake, or in a refrigerator, if the liquid water is freezing, then any, you know, uh, material in the liquid water uh, will be excluded. And uh, as a result, the water molecule uh, would like to make uh, snow, no, no, ice crystal with only water crystals. And so uh, when the liquid water becomes ice, uh, the water is excluding the other, you know, uh, materials or pollutant. This is a natural law. It's uh, well known, you know. Uh, yet, in this case, uh, Dr. Polak's experiment, uh, there is no ice at all. It's liquid, uh, it's room temperature. But still, even under the room temperature, somehow near the hydrophilic surface, there is some special zone, and it's liquid, but still like a crystal. So we can say this area is a, a liquid crystal or a structured water. And because the particles were excluded, uh, Dr. Polak uh, said this is exclusion zone or EZ. And actually, these, uh, this zone is the fourth phase of water. And so there are uh, actually two kinds or two types of water near the hydrophilic surface. Uh, for example, if we think about the glass of water, the glass uh, can be uh, hydrophilic. And so near the surface of glass, uh, there is a, this exclusion zone water. Uh, we can say easy water. Or this is a force phase water. And we can say it's a structured water or a liquid crystal water. And other area, you know, far from the surface, we, it's, uh, it is bulk water, uh, which is uh, usual ordinary liquid water. And this is also from uh, Dr. Polak's uh, presentation. And uh, uh, he thinks that it, this is a material and here is a uh, hydrophilic surface. And there are many uh, layers uh, stacking uh, near uh, on the uh, hydrophilic surface. And here, uh, in this uh, illustration, only six uh, layers are, you know, written or uh, described. But uh, to make 0 0.1 millimeter, you know, thickness, uh, there should be 100,000 layers in this way. So there are many, many, many layers in the uh, exclusion zone. And uh, each, you know, layer, it's a uh, kind of plane, and if you look at this way, uh, the each layer looks like a honeycomb structure. And here, uh, this red uh, ball, big red ball means oxygen, and uh, there are small uh, blue balls here. This is a uh, hydrogen. And uh, here, this is a uh, uh, molecular structure or atomic structure of the phosphate water. 
uh, because uh, in my presentation, I'm uh, kind of explaining about the summary or result of you know Dr. Polak's uh, theory, and uh, here uh, this structure, you know, uh, it's not H2O anymore, and this figure I took from uh, Dr. Polak's uh, book, and briefly I'll explain uh, about the molecular formula of this. Uh, structure. And in this case, you know, we usually count the atom, the number of atoms of hydrogen and oxygen inside the smallest unit. In this case, this one hexagon is the smallest unit of this structure. And in this uh, unit, uh, for example, hydrogen is there are six uh, hydrogen, but uh, only half of hydrogen is inside of this hexagon. And so, uh, one half, one half, it's a six uh, times equal three. So there are three hydrogen atoms inside this uh, unit. And in the case of oxygen, uh, there's only one third of oxygen is inside of this hexagon here, and there are six, uh, uh, six uh, oxygen. And so we uh, multiply six times and equal two. And so this structure is uh, H3O2 and not H2O anymore. It, this is important, so it's not any, uh, H2O anymore. And one more point I uh, have to add, uh, because then we have to, uh, we need to think about the charge. And uh, in the case of hydrogen, we think that the hydrogen has a plus one charge. And uh, in the case of oxygen, uh, it has a minus two uh, charge. And so uh, in this H3O2, uh, if we uh, calculate the net charge of this structure, then hydrogen, uh, there are three hydrogen, and uh, we multiply with uh, plus one, and we get uh, plus three. And in the case of oxygen, there are two oxygen in, inside this unit, and each oxygen has a minus two uh, charge, and then uh, we'll get a minus four, and, uh, uh, sorry, and then net charge will be minus one. This means uh, uh, for each hexagonal unit, there is a minus one charge. So it's uh, basically negatively charged. And so this is again the illustration, and here is the uh, material, and here is the hydrophilic surface, and uh, about 0 0.1 millimeter width, uh, there's an exclusion zone water. And in this area, uh, the molecular formula is H3O2 minus, and it's negatively charged. And uh, here, the far from the uh, hydrophilic surface, uh, we call bulk water, and here, uh, there are uh, hydronium ion, which is actually H3O plus. And uh, number of minus uh, here in easy water and number of plus in bulk water is the same uh, because uh, uh, the water, neutral water is the starting material. And uh, the neutral water somehow uh, split into this negative part and positive part. This is very interesting. And uh, uh, okay, this is uh, Dr. Polak's, uh, you know, uh, theory or, uh, you know, findings about the uh, molecular structure or atomic structure of the fourth phase of water. And so it looks like a battery because here near the surface, there is a negative uh, charge and uh, far from the surface, there is a positive charge. And it looks like uh, just battery. And uh, so, uh, the question is if you if we connect uh, like a LED lamp to both you know negative and positive uh, part, then can we get uh, electricity? This is a question. And here, uh, can the energy contained in the water battery be extracted? And amazingly, the answer is yes. This is you know like this. If you connect the lamp, uh, small lamp, then the lamp. Uh, becomes bright, unbelievable. Here is a uh, Dr. Uh, Gerald Polak's uh, actual experiment, and I borrowed uh, his slide. And the uh, above uh, photograph shows that just uh, the switch was off, so no connection. But if you switch uh, on, then the from the water battery, the electricity will go into this LED lamp, and this 
LED lamp is now, you know, on. Amazing. Okay. And if, if you know, you get uh, uh, electricity from, for example, a glass of water uh, continuously, you know, then it's um, kind of free energy source you know, free energy. If you can get uh, infinite, you know, uh, amount of energy from just a glass of water, then that means you just solved the energy problem. But uh, it was not the case. And uh, actually, uh, there was a charging uh, process uh, was going on simultaneously. And here, uh, you know, one day a student of Dr. Prax's laboratory eliminated, eliminated the easy layer with the flashlight. And he found that the easy layer became thicker. So this means uh, the radiation, the elimination from outside uh, makes the uh, exclusion zone thicker. And here's an uh, experiment. It's from Dr. Prax's uh, book. And without light, it's, you know, uh, Easy. It's uh, without any additional light. Uh, the easy, the width of easy was about 0 0.1 millimeter. It's as usual. And yet, uh, if uh, they added, you know, additional uh, light, in this case, the thickness of the easy layer became thicker, like a three times or a four times. So this means that uh, uh, the light is the energy source. Uh, for this, you know, water battery. And here, this is a little uh, bit uh, busy slide, but uh, uh, Dr. Prak uh, checked uh, what uh, wavelengths uh, is the most effective to expand the exclusion zone. And here, this, uh, this uh, x-axis uh, shows the wavelengths. And here, this is the UV uh, area, and here is visible light. And uh, UV and visible light is, uh, you know, expanded the uh, easy layer like 1.5 or two, two times like that. So there was uh, some effect. But here, this is the uh, infrared region and especially uh, 3000 nanometer, which means uh, 3 micrometer uh, infrared light is the most effective in expanding the exclusion zone. And here, this is a, a low intensity source, but uh, uh, the light source they used was, uh, the intensity was quite low. So they, uh, they made a, you know, standardization, you know, they adjusted the light strength uh, the same as in this uh, visible or UV light. And then uh, he, they found that the effect of infrared light was like a 50 times, uh, they made the uh, uh, exclusion zone uh, 50 times thicker than control. So this means uh, the most effective light is uh, infrared light uh, in expanding uh, exclusion zone, especially the wavelengths uh, at three micrometer. And this is a very interesting uh, result uh, because, uh, you know, this is a, uh, okay, video, uh, like uh, uh, this uh, radiation, it's a uh, infrared light especially. And uh, if the easy layer uh, receives the infrared light, it becomes thicker. Okay. And uh, here, this is my own uh, illustration, but, uh, you know, uh, it's only, uh, only the summary of the phenomenon. And here, this is the ordinary water. And it's like a, a cell, you know, a battery for your cellular phone. And then it's not charged uh, fully, uh, ordinary water. But ordinary water, when it gets energy from sun like this, uh, from sun, uh, visible light and also infrared light, then the water battery is charged like this. And, you know, it, it's H2O. Uh, I just put the asterisk, 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 asterisk. And uh, this means uh, activated water. Yeah, actually it's, you know, mm, the water is uh, splitting into positive and negative, but uh, in short, or 
in summary, you know, I just wrote in this way, activated water. And then this activated water will do some work, like uh, it can uh, produce electricity and it will become the original, you know, ordinary water. Okay, so this is uh, uh, the point of the water battery. And uh, so I, as I said, the water battery, this water battery uh, can be charged, especially the infrared light. And uh, infrared light is uh, very interesting because uh, if you, uh, you know, switch off all the visible light in your room, uh, like, uh, you know, at night, uh, there's no light source at all, you know, uh, no sun or no, uh, no light. Even under these conditions, even under the completely dark, everything is emitting infrared light, more or less. The wall or, you know, the sofa or in this case like that, everything is emitting infrared light, more or less, because they have uh, their own temperature. And infrared means almost, you know, the same as heat, almost the same as heat. And so uh, everything is emitting infrared light and the water is absorbing this infrared light. This is a very interesting uh, situation. And so uh, now I uh, talk about the water in your body. Okay, and uh, there are important uh, points uh, about your body. And, uh, your body is made of uh, small cells. Uh, you have a lot of cells. And, uh, you know, each cell uh, in your body is a very small and, uh, you know, the diameter of your cells are less than 0 0.1 millimeter usually. Most of your uh, cells are smaller than 0 0.1 millimeter. And also, you know, uh, here is a cellular membrane. Uh, the inside and outside surface of the cellular membrane is hydrophilic. And also there are many, many uh, different uh, organelles like a cell nucleus or mitochondria or uh, many other uh, molecules like proteins and uh, uh, DNA or RNA. There are many, many different uh, molecules or structures inside the cells. And almost all of the uh, structures has uh, hydrophilic surfaces, okay? And uh, I will say again, the size of each cell is less than 0 0.1 millimeter. And if you think about the, you know, Dr. Gerardo Polak's uh, experiment, first experiment, uh, it showed that, uh, you know, within the 0 0.1 millimeter from the hydrophilic surface, uh, the water, is, uh, you know, easy, the phosphate water. It has a special uh, liquid uh, crystal uh, structure. And if you think all of this, all of these, you know, uh, points, then we could say that the most of the water in your cell is made of the phosphate water. Because any point, you know, in your cell is very close to hydrophilic surface it's less than 0 0.1 millimeter because the cell size is already uh, less than 0 0.1 millimeter, okay? And also even the outside of the cells, you know, um, any water molecule are very close to nearby hydrophilic surface, like uh, uh, and collagen or many, you know, uh, cellular material, uh, the surface is uh, hydrophilic. And we could say that any, almost all the water molecules uh, actually belongs to the fourth phase of water in your body. This is very important. So in the case of uh, glass of water, uh, the fourth phase of water is very, just close to the surface, glass surface, 0 0.1 millimeter, which means uh, it's uh, probably 1% of the uh, water uh, is the phosphate water in the case of the glass of water. Yet, in the case of your body, almost all the water is made of the phosphate water. Yeah, this is quite amazing. 
And uh, I'll show you the last example uh, from Dr. Polak's uh, actual presentation. And uh, here, uh, this uh, video shows the circulation of the blood. Uh, and here, each, you know, here's a uh, capillary vessels. And uh, in each capillary vessels, uh, there are, you know, a kind of black entities uh, flowing. And each entity is actually red blood cell. And you are familiar with this, you know, kind of, um, you know, uh, saucer like, uh, disc like uh, structure of red blood cells. But uh, if you think about the uh, capillary vessels, the capillary, capillary vessels is narrow, very narrow. And uh, each uh, red blood cell is bigger than the diameter of uh, capillary vessels in this case, like this. And so each red blood cell have to you know, change their shape. And then uh, they have to go through uh, each capillary vessels. And also uh, the total length of the capillary vessels is uh, 100,000 kilometer for one person, which is uh, 2.5 times as long as the circumference of the planet Earth. That means very long. And uh, so each uh, red blood cell should have uh, uh, a lot of resistance to go through the capillary vessels. And yet, you know, it's also again a common sense that the, our heart, the, our uh, heart is responsible for the blood circulation. Uh, but is this really true? This is a question. And uh, uh, Dr. Polak uh, said that uh, uh, some Russian scientists uh, calculated, you know, how much more power uh, your heart uh, needed to uh, perform this blood circulation. And uh, the, his result of calculation was that uh, one million times powerful heart you need to perform this uh, blood circulation. That means the uh, heart itself, it's impossible to do this job. Then here is uh, Dr. Polak's uh, solution to this uh, problem. And uh, they did a very simple experiment. And uh, here is a, a tube made of nafion. Nafion is a very hydrophilic uh, material and it's transparent. So you can see the flow, if there is any flow inside the tube. Uh, and if you add, you know, the micro, uh, particles in this water, then you can follow the movement of water using a uh, light microscope. And here's a real uh, experiment by uh, Dr. Gerald Polak's laboratory. And here's a, a small tube uh, made of nafion. Uh, it's transparent. And uh, please watch the video like this. And she put uh, uh, this nafion tube into water. And just she observed the uh, movement of water. And what they found is that uh, here, this is a small particle and, and the particles were moving uh, kind of automatically. And here, this part is nafion, uh, nafion material. And this part is the opening of the nafion tube. And here, this is the inside of the nafion tube. And you see uh, here is the exclusion zone. Uh, and again, here also the exclusion zone. But at the core part, in the central part of the tube, the water is flowing, which you can recognize uh, with the flow, flowing of these uh, particles. And what's happened is, uh, you know, this is uh, Dr. Uh, Gerald Polak's uh, interpretation. And here, because uh, this tube is uh, hydrophilic, and so near the hydrophilic surface, uh, there will be an easy layer uh, like this, is uh, uh, stacking like this. But at the core, uh, at the center, central part of each, uh, this tube, there will be a positive uh, charge, which is actually uh, from hydronium hydronium ions, H3O plus. And this ion is very small. And here, uh, because uh, positive ion and positive ion, they uh, uh, repel each other. So they try to you know, repel each other at the core region. But uh, uh, 
of course, there is a 50 50 you know, possibility if this uh, flow will go this way or the other way. But uh, uh, of course, it may depend on the uh, uh, tiny you know, different in the, in the environmental conditions. But anyway, once uh, the flow started, it will continue because uh, this uh, hydronium, uh, hydronium ions uh, will try to repel each other. And so uh, the flow, uh, the water is flowing in this way. And uh, of course, uh, for the water to flow, um, the energy source is necessary. And in this case, of course, the light energy from outside is uh, energy source and uh, the light energy is building up the easy layer uh, continuously and also this positive ion is made also continuously and and then uh, they repel each other and uh, uh, the water flows continuously okay and so this uh, means that uh, your blood circulation right now and of course you are uh, of course, you have your physical body, and if you are watching this uh, presentation, your body is, uh, of course, alive. And this is because uh, your heart is pumping, but your heart is not enough for blood circulation. And in your capillary vessels, the water itself is absorbing the light energy from outside. The light is, uh, of course, visible light or infrared light. And you have a body temperature. And so every part of your body is emitting infrared light. And uh, water in your capillary vessels is continuously absorbing this infrared light energy. And they are flowing the blood uh, by their cells. I mean, without any help of heart uh, the pressure pressure from heart. So water is flowing kind of automatically. But it's not automatically. Energy sources from outside as a light energy. So, you, you know, this is I when I, uh, I listened to uh, Jerry's presentation uh, about this point, you know, blood circulation uh, for the first time, I was really amazed, uh, completely amazed, surprised. Uh, unbelievable. But so anyway, uh, you know, if you heard about this uh, point for the first time, uh, I think you didn't know that you are now alive because of the mechanisms of the fourth phase of water. Very interesting. And so this is a, a hypothesis in the role of water uh, based on Dr. Gerald Pollack's uh, findings. And I added uh, some more uh, to his findings. And here, you know, input energy, uh, uh, light energy, especially infrared, uh, will be absorbed by the force phase of water. And here I put the image of the cell, but it's a kind of symbol of the force phase of water. And anyway, the light energy will go into the force phase of water and uh, Dr. Polak is saying that the fourth phase water is actually energy transformer or energy transducer. And uh, uh, the fourth phase water will change the type of energy into other types of energy, like uh, electric power and physical movement, uh, like uh, blood circulation. And uh, this, you know, he uh, he showed the evidence, experimental evidence for this, you know, electric power or physical movement. And now I add some more in red uh, color. Uh, this is my hypothesis, you know, and uh, emotions and thoughts or words and images or prayers and healing energy and psychic power or like that. Uh, we don't know exactly the property of the, you know, words or, and images or prayers or healing energy. And uh, Dr. Emoto used to say, uh, this is a vibration, but in Japanese we say hado. Hado means a vibration. And, but anyway, uh, the physical uh, properties are not yet clear right now, even right now, I think. And uh, 
so emotions or thought may be part of the, the uh, these vibrations are uh, electromagnetic, you know, but uh, the other, you know, words or prayers or healing energy, we don't know exactly the characteristics of those uh, vibrations. But anyway, I believe uh, those uh, information will go into the fourth phase water. Those uh, information or energy will go into the fourth phase of water and uh, the fourth phase of water will change the types of energy and maybe this is hypothesis maybe it uh, the energy will be converted into biochemical uh, reactions or energy for biochemical reactions or self-healing power or immunological capacity or connection to energetic bodies so this is uh, kind of I am expanding, you know, Dr. Uh, Gerard Pollack's uh, findings, but uh, I'm thinking in this way. And the interesting thing is uh, I'll uh, come back to the uh, message from water by Dr. Um, uh, Masara Emoto. And in this case, in, in the case of uh, water crystal photography, we freeze the water and we check the shape of water crystal. And if we freeze, the water will go through the fourth phase of water. Of course, in the liquid water, there is some, you know, fourth phase of water, but uh, when it will freeze, it will completely go through the fourth phase of water. And uh, we, Dr. Emoto found that uh, this is a thank you water crystal, this is a youthful water crystal. And now, based on uh, Dr. Gerard Pollack's uh, theory about the fourth phase of water, the good vibration and bad vibration or good emotions like uh, uh, love or thank you and bad emotions like uh, you feel, uh, both will go into the fourth space of water, but uh, they may affect the water structure differently. It is uh, possible. And then if we freeze uh, these you know, different kinds of waters, which absorb the different uh, emotions like positive emotions or negative emotions, they might show the different shape of water crystal. This is possible, I mean. Uh, this is not yet, of course, proven, but uh, based on Dr. Porak's idea, it is just possible right now. And so, anyway, conclusion Dr. Porak's experiments on the fourth phase of water proved water is a rechargeable battery charged by radiant energy or light energy, especially infrared energy. Yeah, please remember, this is very important. You, you, uh, uh, water in your body is absorbing the light energy all the time, uh, even if you are not aware of it. And water can convert the stored energy into other types of energy, like, uh, you know, physical uh, energy, like blood circulation, or probably uh, electric energy, or maybe metabolic energy, or like that. And also, it is possible that the fourth phase of water can memorize information. This is also uh, Dr. Pollack's uh, hypothesis, I think, but uh, uh, he's saying that the fourth phase of water uh, not only can store the energy, but also memorize information. And here, this is uh, uh, just uh, one uh, information for you. Interview of Dr. Gerard Pollack uh, in Sharon Klein Hour on July 10th, uh, year 2014. And uh, a new hypothesis recently proposed by water researcher Gerard Pollack at the University of Washington offers the first plausible scientific explanation for Emoto's findings. Positive and negative emotions may affect the fourth phase of water, and as a result, the shapes of their water crystals may become different from each other. This is what uh, Dr. Gerard Park is saying or is thinking as a scientist. So it's very interesting. Uh, I believe this is true, of course. And so uh, here, this is uh, again summary, kind of summary of scientific studies on water. And it has been suggested scientifically that water has the following two properties. Uh, first one, water memorizes and transmits information. Uh, this is, of course, Dr. Polak is saying based on his fourth phase of water, uh, but also the Dr. Duke Montagne is giving scientific evidence that the water uh, memorizes and transmit information. 
and water stores and convert energy. This is really the Dr. Gerald Porax in the fourth phase of water. Uh, he proved scientifically, experimentally, that the water can store and convert energy. And so uh, I'm uh, very happy that uh, uh, so uh, several scientists are giving uh, evidence, hard evidence, you know, scientific evidence that the water can have memory or water can store uh, energy. And, uh, you know, uh, Dr. Emoto was uh, not a scientist, uh, but he observed many, many different water crystals and he published message from water. But uh, there was uh, uh, again, uh, some criticism that, oh, this is not, not science or it's uh, uh, not scientific. But uh, very recently, uh, especially in the 21st century, uh, some scientists are supporting what Dr. Emoto uh, said, uh, which is uh, that the water has a memory. And even very recently, the, our consciousness can affect the water. Uh, some scientists are giving evidence for this. So, okay, now it's uh, time. So I think, uh, I hope that you enjoyed uh, my presentation. So uh, maybe 10 years ago or 20 years ago, uh, what Dr. Emoto used to say, uh, you know, we got a lot of uh, criticism, but uh, now we are very happy that uh, some scientists, uh, water scientists are supporting with uh, scientific experimental evidence that what Dr. Emoto used to say was true. Okay, thank you very much. Bye-bye.